Now working our way backwards, if I'm given a decimal number in sign format, how do I convert that into binary? So we've already done the algorithm. We've already seen this in the unsigned lectures twice over, once for converting from decimal to binary, once for converting from decimal to hexadecimal. So you're familiar with this. So when you're doing something like this, the same thing goes. If I, if you, if I tell you it's a signed number and it's a positive number, you already know how to do it. You just use the repeated divide, dividing by two method using the quotients and the remainders until you work the quotient down to zero, and then you work back up from bottom to top the remainders in reverse order, and you get your, the answer to your problem. So 37, as you remember, resolves down to 100101. And I might need to pad that with a few zeros if I'm talking about signed numbers, because right now I always tell you that one up front means it's a negative number. So we should probably pad that to make sure that we're dealing with a positive number instead of a possible negative number just from the inference of what we're looking at. If I hand you the number negative 37 and I tell you convert that from decimal into binary, well, what do you do? So first step is to kind of forget about the negative for the moment and just, you know, because we can work the additive inverse, the two's complement later. So that we do exactly like we just did. We take positive 37 and we convert that down into its binary component, which is from before. And I added the two extra zeros just to make this an 8-bit quantity. So you do get your 00100101. And from here, you do the two's complement. You take that positive 37 in binary. Two's complement will get me negative 37. And we're pretty much done. So two's complement. Take, take all the bits, flip them. So that becomes 11011010. And then from there, I add 1 to that. So the result is 11011011. And I go, does that sanity check, does that work out for me? And it does because, again, if I take my starting value and I add that to my resultant value, it sums up to 0 with that carry bit that falls away. So, you know, so we sanity check the thing. We took our positive 37, we turned it negative, and so that way our negative 37 in binary is exactly that, 11011011. But what about negative 107? If I'm dealing with a signed decimal number and I tell you, hey, convert that into binary, it's your turn. What do you think? I have a signed number in front of me, and I see a negative sign on top of that. So I know I have to use two's complement some, somewhere along the line to solve this problem. But for the moment, I go, well, what do I do? Let's just remove it, and then we'll deal with it later. So I take positive 107, and I apply the repeated dividing by 2 method. And what you get here is, you know, I, and with a leading 0, just to make sure I'm dealing with a positive quantity. So I get 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. And if you want to, you know, if you double check it or whatever, you get the correct, that is correct. That is 107 in pure, basically unsigned positive binary. So then now that I have that, I have to apply the additive inverse, and that will tell me what negative 107 is. So two's complement math. Take that, flip all the bits. So I get 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. And I add 1 to that, and I get 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And the only left. Uh, let the left thing to do here remaining is to add the starting value to my resultant value and again I get all zeros with that carry bit that just falls right off so I know at the end of the day here that negative 107 in binary is 10010101 the last portion of this lecture is something I've deferred to this time from previous lectures so it's binary subtraction and when we discussed this, I said, oh, we need to understand what 2's complement is first before we can do it, at least at the level that the CPU does it. We could have applied it like any other base system and, and do the borrowing like we do with base 10 or base 16, like we've shown in the past. But that's not how the CPU does it. So the CPU, when you actually do a subtraction on the computer, instead of doing A minus B, it negates the B and actually does an addition. So a minus b is actually a plus negative b. So how does that work for us? So in these two examples, no matter what base system I'm talking about, 12 minus 3 better be 9, and 9 minus 4 better be 4. So, you know, that it pretty much makes sense. So looking at the left-hand side of both of these, 
if you did kind of do the old style math, do the carries and do whatever you need to do, you do get the correct results. And again, since we don't need to worry about it, we're not talking about it, I'm not going to show you the algorithm, but it does work if you did the carry method. But here on the right-hand side, I'm not going to show too much about it. You can, you can prove it to yourself if you really, really need to. We just need to do this. We just need to do this one time over just to prove it. So if I take my 12 minus 3 and I turn it into 12 plus negative 3, what result do I get? So do the 2's complement, and that 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 becomes 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. Sorry if I got it off by 1, but you get the point. And then you take that 12, and you add it to the 2's complement result of the negative 3. And what do you get? And again, that carry bit's going to fall off, but the result of all of that is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, which is the 9 that I'm expecting to see. And down below as well, it's 9 plus negative 5. Take the negative, or take the, take the 5, apply 2's complement to it, turn it negative, add it together. So my 9 plus negative 5, you know, when I do the math and I resolve the carry bit and all of that gets me the 4, which is you know, blah, 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 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, that gets me the 4 that is the correct answer. And of course, this is how the CPU does it, so we've proven it works for in every case that we're ever going to be doing uh, subtraction with. All right, so 18 minutes in, that's everything we need to know to convert from binary into decimal, from decimal into binary in a signed format, and we also looked at binary subtraction by using two's complement and actually doing addition to do subtraction. So long video, thanks for sticking with it. If you have any questions, make sure you contact me by email, office hours, whatever it takes to get those questions answered. So thanks again, we'll see you next time.